Okay, let's see my solution. So for my get cash part, and then uh, I first want to check whether my cash is greater than 10. If it is greater than 10, and then I want to return the exact amount in my wallet. And otherwise, I'm going to return string saying, let me find an ATM first. Okay, and for the setter, and then I want to set the cash, so there should be another parameter called new cache. So I'm, send, I'm send, setting the cache to be the new cache I just received. Okay, and then I can, well, remember, I can still do this. So Amy valid dot underscore cache. This is still correct, but remember, this is ugly. If you show this code to any of the experienced Python programmer, and then this, this person will tell you, no, this is wrong. And then you really have to do this way. So this is, you are making use, making use of a getter function or a getter method to get the cache. Okay, and then let's uh, let's see what does the official documentation and the official coding style guide say about the private parameters. So it says that we don't really use the term private here in Python. And since no attribute is really private in Python, so this is set by PEP8. And by the way, PEP8 is the, the most commonly used style guide in Python. Okay, and then well, uh, uh, the Python official documentation also says that uh, we don't really have this kind of a private instance variable. And uh, well, but if you have a a, uh, a prefix of an underscore in an attribute. And this just says this should not be touched outside of this class. Okay, so this is a, a Python, Python community convention thing. Okay, and then next, well, let's try to do a print. If you want, I want to print Amy's wallet and then I want to see what's inside. And you will find that it just say, give you this information. Well, for this information you get, well, this is a wallet object. So this is an object created using the wallet class. And then it gives you this. What is that? This is it's a memory, a memory address. So if you go to the memory at this address, you will be able to find this uh, wallet object for Amy. And what, what is that? Why do we want to know the memory address of this object? No, we, we, we are not, we are not discussing about the, the memory addresses, right? So how about we make another method so that if we do a print, we can see what, what are the attributes inside this wallet and then how do we do that and you are going to do a underscore underscore string so this is another method you can do that you can build into your class and remember for the underscore underscore string underscore underscore and uh, it has to return a string and that is a requirement okay and then I'm re returning a, a string and then I'm using another tree called string uh, formatting that is well for the percent sign s this is a placeholder for a string and then for the percent sign dot two f this is a uh, this is placeholder for a float number and this float number uh only keeps two digits after the decimal and that's the reason we are doing the dot two okay and then after that i want to do a percent sign and then those are the two values i'm gonna fill in into those two placeholders so the first placeholder will be replaced by self.owner and then the second placeholder will be replaced by self dot underscore cache okay so this is the way that i can create a string with placeholders and later i specify what are the two values to be filled in to those placeholders okay and then uh, if you want to create uh, a value for J and then if you want to do a print and then I will have this string so it says J has 90.00 dollars uh, in uh, their wallet okay so how about in uh, how, how about I change it to in his her wallet okay so I think this sentence is more grammatically correct Okay, and then, well, let me introduce you the concept of encapsulation. And 
encapsulation is one of the main reasons that we are doing object oriented programming. And you can consider the data, uh, data frame as an example. And as you can see for the data frame, we have a lot of the attributes and we have even more methods. Okay. And it, and then whatever you are doing with a data frame, you are just doing two things. Number one, you are touching the attributes. And number two, you are making use of the methods so that you can manipulate the inner attributes. So you are just doing two things. And well, and this is the way that we are doing the encapsulation. In the class, we have many methods, we have many variables. Eventually, we want to encapsulate everything into a class. And then you can use this class to build some of the instance, their objects. And then you can use those objects. However, using the, uh, using a class in the objects, well, many of the things are hidden say probably you have been doing the data frame for several months or half year now and you don't really open the box and see what's inside and do you really feel ashamed no you don't have to because this is a way of doing the encapsulation since it has already been encapsulated the inner details will become a a, a black box you you can open that but you don't have to as long as you know what are the attributes and what are the methods and then how do you use those methods and you are good you can still be a professional data science people without really opening the box of the data frame okay and then uh, in Python there is a more Pythonic way of doing the getter and setter. So, well, uh, we are using the decorators, okay? And then for this class C, and then I'm using a X as a uh, a a an attribute. And then if I want to do a at, uh, at property, and then I'm using this one, uh, and I'm defining another method as a decorator, okay? And this is a decorator for a getter. And then I can also do another setter. Uh, so this at x dot setter, this is a decorator saying this is a setter method. And then for this setter, well, I, I can also enforce some of the rules saying for the variable x, if it is greater than 100, I'm going to set that to 100. If it is smaller than zero, I'm going to set it at zero. Otherwise, if the value is between zero and 100, I'm going to set this underscore x to one hand, uh, to the value I'm receiving. Okay, so this is just a more Pythonic way of doing getter and set. Okay, and then if I want to create a C uh, using a, a value and then uh, this uh, this setter will be triggered and then I'm going to do a 100. Okay, and then here is another exercise for the oops, I, I don't want to show the answer key, of course. Uh, for this one, uh, I'm asking you to create a class dog. And then for a dog, we want to have the name, the species, and then we have the underscore age. So we want to consider the age as a, a private attribute. Okay, and then we also have a quiet, and this quiet will be a boolean. A boolean saying true, so this dog is quiet, and otherwise this dog is not. Okay, and then uh, a dog should have the actions or the methods below. So you want to have a constructor, of course, and then the dog, the dog should, can, should be able to approach you. So if you call the approach method, and then it will say uh, the dog is coming. And then the bark, well, a dog can bark, but depending on whether this dog is quiet or not, it will say, it will print either I don't bark or bark, bark, bark. Okay, and eventually, uh, if you want to, if you want to, uh, you want to have a getter of the age, so it will return the underscore age. Okay, so go ahead and pause this video here, and uh, well, I'm about to show you my solutions. So pause your video and then do the coding by yourself first. 
Okay, I hope you have already finished the coding and then let, uh, let me show you my solution. So for the constructor, you want to specify all those parameters and then uh, I'm taking the age. Well, this is a little bit different. So we are taking the age as a, a input parameter. But inside, in the con constructor, we have a self dot underscore age. So this age on the right side, this is the parameter we are receiving. And then for self dot underscore age, that is a private attribute. OK, and then for the uh, for the ap approach and then we are pr uh, we are printing the name is is coming to you. And then for the bark, we are trying to get we are trying to check uh, the quiet first. So if not self dot quiet and then we print bark 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 and otherwise I am printing I'm um, I don't bark. OK, and then especially uh, in the last part, we want to use the decorator and then we want to return uh, the age. OK, so define age and then we are going to do a uh, self dot age as a return value. OK, and then if you want to uh, if you want to see how we can uh, make use of this class and then we create a, a class, a, a dog Coco and then uh, that is a uh, Greyhound and then the age is five and then two saying this dog is quiet. And then if you want to do a Coco dot approach and then it will print a print Coco is coming to you. And if you want to do Coco dot bark and then if you say I don't bark because gray, a Greyhound is a a quiet species of dog. OK, and then we also create a greasy and greasy is a Chihuahua. And boy, uh, you probably you know Chihuahuas are are noisy, right? And then if you want to do greasy dot bark and then it will print bark bark bark. And eventually if you want to do a greasy dot H and then you are doing uh, you are accessing this getter uh, this getter uh, method and then it will return you the H. OK, and then uh, the last question, how do you check whether a data frame is empty? OK, let's go to the official documentation again and then let's check empty. OK, so this empty is an attribute. So what does this mean? If you want to get whether a data frame is empty or not, do you do data frame dot empty parentheses? or you do data frame dot empty. OK, the answer is here. It is an attribute. And when you are getting an attribute and then you do data frame dot empty. That's it. You don't have to do the parentheses because once you add the parentheses, you are doing a method call. OK, so a very quick sum up. Well, class is a definition that encapsulates two things. Well instance variables or attributes and then the methods okay and then uh, there's really no uh, private attribute in python well if you do a object dot underscore variable and this reminds all the programmers it is supposed to be private however if you really want to uh mess it up you can still do that and that is the the tricky thing about python that's not the part i like the best about python but this is how the python designers designed python okay and then a good way to use the getter and setter will be using the decorators like this one so well if you're doing a deck uh, a uh, the old school getter and setter and then probably uh, that that's okay it doesn't break anything but it will look you your code like Java code and then to do the Pythonic style of the getter and setter and then you have to do this way okay so this is a really Pythonic way of doing the getters and setters okay so as I said at the very beginning I'm not requiring you to do a uh, dozens of classes and for each of the class you have dozens of attributes dozens of methods you don't have to do so but you do have to have the basic understanding of the object oriented programming so later when you open the official documentation of second learn for example and you know what you are really reading okay so that's it for today and i will see you later bye bye